The moment we have been waiting for has arrived. The Ukrainian counterattack for which the country has been preparing since the end of last year is now underway. Ukraine said nothing, but Ukrainian officials, Western analysts and Russian military bloggers all agree that the offensive began earlier this week with increased fighting on the front since then. Ukrainian officials said there would not be a single strike and that it was being designed as a series of operations that would take months. What we've seen over the past week is just the first step. But things are already starting to take shape. Russia controls Bakhmut in eastern Ukraine, where thousands of Russian and Ukrainian soldiers died in the war's longest and bloodiest battle. But holding the city will be difficult. Wagner's group, responsible for the fighting and victory at Bakhmut, allegedly left and was replaced by Russian troops. Video footage shows Ukrainian armed forces in a southerly direction destroying a column of Russian invaders' armored vehicles. The video was recorded by an unmanned aerial vehicle. Three invaders' armored fighting vehicles rushed along the field road. An artillery shell exploded near them, but it was very difficult to hit a moving target. Suddenly, at the crossroads and forest path completely destroyed by the trenches, the first tank exploded with a bang similar to the detonation of several anti-tank mines or a landmine. After that, the rest of the tanks stopped. Meanwhile, a tank and more of the interventionists approached them on the same road. At that time, one of the tanks was back along the road, but the tank tried to move forward near the tank that was previously blown up. However, right next to him, he also exploded powerfully. After that, the rest of the tanks were moved back one shell exploded next to it. Meanwhile, the tanks exploded and the tanks started burning very profusely. Russia and Ukraine both reported heavy fighting in Ukraine on Friday, with bloggers describing the first sightings of German and US armored vehicles, signaling that Ukraine's long-anticipated counterattack was underway. With almost no independent reporting from the front lines and Ukraine saying lil, it is impossible to judge whether Ukraine penetrated the Russian defenses in its bid to repel the occupying forces. Ukraine is striking on three fronts in the east, southeast and south of the country. Bakhmut, which Russia captured last month, Velika Novosilka, and Novodonetsk in the Donetsk and Orykiv regions, in neighboring Zaporizhia. However, it appears that Ukraine also suffered its first defeat in Zaporizhia with video showing several armored vehicles and at least one tank, which Russia claims was a German-supplied Leopard, being blown up by a mixture of mines and artillery. On the other hand, fighters of the 72nd Separate Mechanized Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces named after Black Zaporoshets near Ugladur in the Donetsk region destroyed a Russian invader tank with the help of the domestic missile complex Stutna P. The unit's press service reported on this on its own Telegram channel, publishing a related video taken from the monitor of the ATGM operator. Another assault tank was destroyed by soldiers from the 110th Separate Mechanized Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces named for Colonel General Mark Bezrutka, who was fighting north of Avivka. The unit posted video footage corresponding to the unmanned aerial vehicle on its Facebook page. It's unclear what hit the tank itself, but it burned intensely. However, like any member of his crew, he was able to put out the fire. Another video also shows guns of the 26th Artillery Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces destroying the Russian invaders' BM-21 Grad rocket salvo fire system. The operator may find a target in firing position, provide the gunners with their coordinates and record their work, and strike directly from the first shot. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Ukrainian armed forces are advancing in the Zaporizhia region in a direction from the free city of Oryiv to the occupied city of Tokmek. This was announced by the German publication BILD. At first glance, this sounds very optimistic, especially considering that the distance from Tokmak to the front line in early June was about 25 kilometers. But what is clear 
BILD refers to previously announced information that the Ukrainians broke through the front line and approached the village of Robotin. It really lies between Tokmak and Orokov, but the distance from the village to the dividing line in early June is about 5 kilometers. The General Staff of the Ukrainian Armed Forces reported on June 10 that Russia had lost 214,660 soldiers in Ukraine since the start of the full-scale invasion in February 2022, with an estimated 890 casualties as of June 9. Russian President Vladimir Putin said on Friday that Ukraine's counteroffensive had begun, but Ukraine had yet to achieve its goals. We can definitely state that this Ukrainian attack has started, Putin said in a video interview published on Telegram by a Russian journalist. But the Ukrainian forces did not achieve their objectives in any of the fighting areas, he added. Overall, Ukraine has 12 brigades with a total of 50,000 to 60,000 troops ready to launch counteroffensives. Nine brigades have been armed and trained by the West. The Russian Defense Ministry said its forces had repelled two Ukrainian offensives south of Orykiv and four near Velika Novosilka further east, where it said Ukrainian strike forces included two battalions of troops backed by tanks. Several battalions of up to 1,000 soldiers made up a brigade. The Southern Front is where Ukrainian forces are widely expected to make their main offensive, heading for the coast. Deputy Defense Minister Hanna Malier said only that the battle was continuing for Velika Novosilka and that Russian troops were stepping up active defense in Orykiv. In the east, Ukraine has reported advances around Bakhmut, which Russian troops captured last month after nearly a year of Europe's deadliest ground fighting since World War II. Ukraine generally prohibits journalists from reaching its frontline side during offensive operations.